Welcome to CAT tutorials and in this video I'll be doing practice problem 3.4. Now the question says we should find v1, v2 and v3 using our nodal analysis. So if you can just look we have two super nodes. Um, so basically if you have a um, a voltage source between two nodes and nothing else between and that becomes a super node. But in this case, we have a super node after a super node. And therefore, this can be treated as one super node. Therefore, we're only going to have one huge equation. Now, also, anything parallel to a super node is also engulfed or omitted and considered to be part of the super node. Let me just use a different color to highlight what I'm talking about. So these are the two super nodes and we have the six ohms, which is parallel to those two super nodes. So all of this just can be treated as one huge super node, right? And therefore the currents which exit this huge super node are that, that, and that. Only three values which we're interested in. So now let's first look inside the super nodes. So whenever we want to form an equation which is associated with voltage sources, we start from the positive terminal to the, and go to the negative terminal. For, for this first voltage source, we start starting at the positive terminal. We have V1, subtract uh, V2. And that is going to be the voltage between these two points. The voltage between V1 and V2 is V1 minus V2. And in between, what do we have? We have a value of 10. So that is basically your first equation, right? Call it equation one. And secondly, if you come here, we have V3 and V2. The voltage between these two is V3 minus V2. So V3 minus V2 is therefore equals to 5i, right? And if you look here, i is defined to be the current which goes through the two ohms. So V1 minus 0 divided by 2 is i. So therefore, i is equals to v1 over 2, right? So we're going to substitute this into there later. And our final equation is the equation of the super node itself. So we're going to have v1 divided by 2. We're going to have v2 divided by 4. And finally, you're going to have v3 divided by 3 is equal to 0. And that, all of this, we find from here. That, that, and that. So we now have these equations here. So let's start off by simplifying this equation here because we still have the i. So now basically, yeah, let's simplify this equation. The second one, the first one is fine. And the second one, what we basically have to do is to substitute this i. We said i is equals to v1 over 2. And so substituting this i there would have v3 minus v2 is equals to 5. And then substitute that. A, which is v1 divided by 2, right? Then I'm going to multiply through by 2. Multiplying through by 2, we're going to have 2v3, negative 2v2, and then uh, equals to 5v1. And then taking this to this side, we're going to have negative 5v1, negative 2v2, and finally 2v3, right? is equals to zero. Now moving on to simplify the third equation, we're going to multiply through by, let's use 12, right? So multiplying through by 12, we're going to have um, 6v1 plus 3v2 uh, plus 4v3 is equal to zero, right? So we have the first equation, uh, the second equation and the third equation. So I've actually written the, these uh, down already. So I have them up here. I just wanted to show you how to get them. So now I'm just going to erase this part so we can move on to the next step. Okay. Erase all of this. So the next step is basically just finding or solving these equations. So this system equations can be solved in any way which you know, but I'm going to use Kramer's rule. 
if you are unfamiliar with Kramer's rule, I already have a video up which shows how to do Kramer's rule. So let's continue. So you want to transform all of this into matrices. So yeah, Kramer's rule says x sub k is equal to delta k divided by delta, right? And so we're going to start by finding delta, which is the for a matrix of form AX equals to B, which is the determinant of the A matrix. So the A matrix consists of the coefficients of all the variables of interest. And starting at the top, we have one minus one and zero for the coefficients. So one minus one and zero. Then we have, for the second one, we have minus five, negative two and two. So we have minus five, negative two and two. And finally, for the last equation, we have six, three, and four as the coefficients of the variables. So six, three, and four. That is basically the A matrix. And next, we write the variables of interest in a column matrix, All right? And finally, you're gonna say equals to the B matrix, which consists of the constants on the other side, All right? So 10, zero, zero, on the other side of the equal sign. So this is basically transforming those equations into matrix form. So now we're going to find the determinant of this matrix, which is simply delta, right? So delta is equal to the determinant of that, which is um, this, right? So let's calculate the determinant of that. We're going to start by crossing off the 1. So we have 1 multiplied by negative 2 multiplied by 4, and I'm going to say subtract 2 multiplied by 3. Let me quickly grab a calculator so I can do this. Um, right. So we have that determinant, which is the determinant of the A matrix, right? So we have that. Uh, this is 3. Then the second term says negative, negative 1, right? Which is after crossing out this middle part. Then we're left with negative 5 multiplied by 4. Then we have negative or minus uh, 2 multiplied by 6. Then for the last term, we have, let's see, the last term we're going to cross out the 0. So anything multiplied by this 0 is going to be 0. So we just have 0. Let's just write 0. Don't even care about what's in the brackets because it's going to amount to 0 anyway. So putting this into a calculator, we have um, negative 8, negative 6, which is uh, negative 8, negative 6, which is basically negative 14. Then we have um, plus negative 20, um, negative 12, right? And the answer to that, or the answer to this determinant of the A matrix is negative 46, right? Uh, moving on to find determinant one, determinant one, which corresponds to taking this B matrix, the B column, this B column, to the first column of the A matrix. So we leave everything as it is, but take this B column into the first column of the A matrix, right? So doing that, we're going to say determinant of 10, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 2, 3, and then say 0, 2, 4, right? Finding the determinant of this will give 10, right, 10, and then multiply by negative 2 multiplied by 4, and then subtract uh, 2 multiplied by 3, 2 multiplied by 3, then say the next term is negative, negative 1, and what do we have here? We're going to have 0 minus 0 because 0 multiplied by 4 and 2 multiplied by 0 is basically 0. So just 0 minus 0, which is going to amount to 0 anyway. And then the last part, we don't even have to write anything because anything in here is going to be multiplied by 0. So it's therefore 0 as well. So determinant 1 is equals to just this, which we have here. So it's uh, this is negative 8. And this is negative 6, so negative 8, negative 6, which is negative 14, multiplied by 10, is basically negative 140. 
that is determinant one. Let's move on to find determinant two, right? Determinant two. Determinant two is formed by taking the B matrix to the second column of the A matrix and leave everything as it is, right? So you have one, negative five, six, 10, zero, zero, moving the B column to the second column of the A matrix. And we have zero, two, four, and then we have that. Now, finding the determinant of this would equate to, let's see, we're gonna have zero minus zero. Then we're gonna have negative 10, and then we're gonna have, let's see, let's see, we're gonna have negative five multiplied by four, and then subtract, let's see, subtract two multiplied by six, now the final term is basically going to be, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, the final term is basically going to be zero, because multiply by zero, right? So that's basically it. So here's what we're gonna have. We're gonna have negative 20 minus, uh, minus 12. So negative 20 minus, so that is negative 32. Multiply by negative 10, that will give us uh, 320. So determining two is 320. So I've already recorded uh, all of these up here, up here. So I'm just going to erase and continue to find determinant three. So let me erase, yeah, this part. So now I'm going to find determinant three, right? Determinant three is equals to basically taking the B column to the third column of the A matrix. So one, negative five, six, negative one, negative two, three, and we have 10, zero, zero. Find the determinant of this, I'm gonna say equals to one multiplied by zero minus zero. The next term is gonna be that. Multiplied by, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see. You also have, have the same thing, zero minus zero. And finally, we have 10 multiplied by let's see what we have we have negative five negative five multiplied by three then we gonna subtract negative two multiplied by six right so here's what we have let's see let's see let's see so we have negative 15 plus 12 which is negative three negative three multiplied by 10 is negative 30. so delta three is negative 30. Now I already wrote all of this up here. Delta is negative 46. Delta one is negative 140. Delta two is 320. And finally, delta three is negative um, 30. So here's what's left. Since Kramer's rule says the x k variable is equals to delta k divided by delta, then we want to find, for instance, v1. So these two subscripts should match. So V1 is therefore equals to delta one divided by delta, right? Which is equals to delta one is negative 140, as you can see up here, right? So negative 140 divided by negative 46, this bottom delta is the delta of, or the determinant of the A matrix as it is. And secondly, or subsequently, you can do the same for all the others, right? Just basically that. So the bottom part is always going to be the same. Negative 46, negative 46. And then up here we have delta 2 is equal to 320, right? And delta 3 is negative 30. So you just basically have to simplify these values to find the actual values of the, what you call these, the voltages. So negative, let's punch this into a calculator, negative 140 divided by negative 46, right? We're gonna have 3.043 volts, 3.043 volts, right? Then moving on, we're gonna say 320, and punch this into a calculator again, 320 divided by negative 46, the answer is negative 6.96 or negative nine. Okay, negative 6.957 volts, right? And finally, we have negative 30 divided by negative 46. 
which is basically 30 divided by 46. The answer to that is 652.174 millivolts. So 652.174 millivolts. And these are basically your answers for this question. And that's how you'd solve the problem using Krim's rule.